So uh, let me begin saying that um, if you go back to the history, like Lord Moynihan, that is more than now a century, more than a century ago, he observed that every operation is an experiment in bacteriology. If you look at that, if you see that if, even today it may hold good. So that is why I'm tell, trying to tell you that whatever the topic that we are all discussing has been discussed often, repeatedly discussed, and still as surgeons, we are trying to figure out what is the best in today's world. And we also know that the bacteria that so comes in, the bacteria that comes in is either endogenous, exogenous or hematogenous. But it is nearly, it is known that 80% of them are endogenous and it is true. So it means patients bring in the organism. So that is why a pre-hospital optimization is extremely important. Of course, in trauma, you may not be able to do that optimization, but in all the other electives, you will definitely do it. And also like we also know that the spread is by hand contact and the air quality. The air quality already has been spoken by Professor Vikas Agashi and also like uh, Rajiv Rai Chaudhary also has covered, a, covered it on that. So we let us not uh, do it. And the hand contact is something I was thinking well, no one will speak on it and I, I have some amount to talk about it in my lecture. So this is what is important. So if you think surgical site infection is something that you need to concentrate, it is the systems must be in place. You have to get your right system. You have to make sure that everyone in the team must be involved. It has to be a team approach. And all phases of care, like as in the first talk by Professor Rashekran said, in pre-op, intra-op, and post-op, in all phases of care must be extremely good, and then it must be right. And what is more important is the metrics. That is, metrics means like quantitative assessment. You need to make sure that everyone is compliant and surveillance and continuous efforts are the most important aspect in getting this sorted out. And I'm going to talk about the surveillance and then getting it done. If you look at what is the single culprit that you would think it is always you or me. It is the surgeons who must fall in line. Suppose if everyone fall in line, if the leader falls in line, then I think the entire team would get into a line where the philosophy of surgical site infection will come into everybody's mind and efforts. See, for example, like, you know, this is the already Dr. Rashekin has put up this uh, study. And then you see like, and in our hospital, before the implementation of all the bundles of approach care, the infection rate was hovering around 3.5. But after the compliance, of everybody and then getting the systems in place and then making sure everybody is in like surveillance that is everybody is being seen and then how it is being performed then then when we bring it all the cares approach to perfect to normalcy then you can see that post implementation of care bundle we have reduced the infection rate to 1.15 this is extremely important so it means that if you are continuously monitored you would definitely tend to do better. The success depends on the compliance of all these policies. And then everyone in the team must develop the safety culture. So everybody must develop that. And then promote hand hygiene. Why hand hygiene is important? Because it has been proven beyond doubt that hand hygiene saves lives. So encourage positive behavior. And then whoever is having a negative behavior, you must suppress them and put systems in place. So if you follow all this, then we will get there. And then you need to have a committee where it does all the surveillance, preventive activities and staff training. So let us look at this is an important, uh, one of the landmark paper that was published a centuries ago. It was Samuel in 1861. See like there were two hospitals. This was an obstetric hospital, two hospitals. And then you see one in red is the one that is managed by the doctors and the other one is by the maternity staff. The doctors, what they used to do was they in the morning, they will go and do an autopsy 
and then come back to do all the labor labor work they will go to the labor ward and do the labor work so if you see that the maternal mortality was very high in those performed by the doctors whereas those which were performed by the maternity staffs it was less so what they did was they introduced all the students and doctors were required to clean their hands with chlorinated lime solution when entering the labor ward and then because of this practice they started this practice and then when they found out that after the 1846 you can see that by just doing that one single intervention they found that the maternal mortality rate fallen down and in fact now the doctors have started performing better than the maternity staff so it has been proven that this is the single most important is a dramatic event which showed that you have to clean your hands very well and clean your hands it saves lives and this one message is very important so let us look at it see in our hospital what we did was before education that means we suddenly one day we decided we will do an audit on the hand scrub see you can see that consultants on average did for 4.7 minutes and sister that is the nurses did for 4.3 minutes whereas the registrars dnbs fellows and anesthetists they were doing it for very short time so you can see that the hand scrub time itself was very very short you know that the scrub is done because all of them are contact antiseptics so you need to retain the fluid in your hand for longer time so that they are do act as a disinfectant so they are all contact antiseptics so you need to have it like that on the contrary when we said that we are going to supervise and then we told them about what is the steps you have to when did when we educated everybody about the steps in this hand scrub we pasted it everywhere and then we did the study you can see the dramatic improvement after education see consultant did for longer time and everybody followed like beyond 6 minutes see none of them were be before 6 minutes so this is the most important so you need to educate them continuously monitor and if you monitor them it in fact changes it again it is a dramatic event so before it was average was if you put everybody together it was 3.65 minutes but now it is after the education it was 7.68 minutes this itself is a dramatic event so that means if you are monitored if there is a surveillance that is done and if you are educated enough then you automatically change your practice now you see like compared to april 2011 that we did in the wards also we do it we also do the audit in all the wards so it was like we wanted to see how many of them were compliant on this so you can see that the percentage of complaints was very less now you can see the hand hygiene complaints in 2020 because we are monitoring everybody and then it is as good as anywhere say like wherever there is a drop we go in and teach everybody that see you have a drop in this ward so you have to make sure that everybody follows it and the drop may be because the new trainees have come in or new people would have been taken in the ward so like the like that there is a change that happens so it is very important that you continuously monitor so when you are monitoring them automatically everybody starts to follow the compliance levels become better and this is one of the important things so the compliance is better when you are monitored so that is the most important so we have this hand hygiene audit form and we every day this is being monitored whoever walks into the patient the nurse who goes along with that they tick the form and then they make sure that whether you, they will tell you whether you are using the hand rub or not whether you have used a glove in appropriate case have you used a glove or not everything is monitored so when you are done that then automatically everyone falls into line so that is why the surveillance is important and also like when you want to say that how is the outcome you have to have a data collection that means every data you must collect and then every month you have to analyze interpret it and then you have to disseminate the information you have to give it to everybody you have to tell okay this word is like this this other word is like that so like that you have to keep on disinformation that is the information you have to keep on disseminating then everybody will know everybody will know the where they stand and then how they have to they have to perform so education and training becomes very important so for breaking the barriers you need to develop them to have a knowledge and behavioral modification and continuous modification motivation is needed to change the culture if you do this 
and then make sure everyone is responsible in the unit then of course your infection control will be less infection control will be all right so otherwise it is very difficult that's why you see even the junior most that is the that is whoever is mopping or floor cleaning everybody is given an opportunity to speak on hand hygiene everybody is given opportunity to talk about the way they are getting the it sorted out and then the staffs are continuously told about how to get the infection under control education materials are given see our chairman coming in and then making sure that everything is being done and then surveillance he also keeps doing it all the doctors are taught how to scrub how to do a hand rub all these are taught every year that is in the day where we have the infection control day we have to teach all this then everybody actively participate and also we have we do have a lot of visitors coming in including the visitors we take an opportunity to teach them about hand rub and then the scrub uh, uh, formalities everything we teach and then you see this committee meeting that is hic hospital infection committee everybody is the, there and then the all of them are given opportunity to speak where is the lacuna and then they everybody gives their opinion and then we have to take it from there and each members information is taken into account and then they are respected and they are followed that is the way where suppose if you think you are the boss and then you just want to implement everything it may not happen but if you take everybody's opinion you follow everybody's instructions and make sure if it is amenable to the control of getting the best infection control you must follow it and then you have to always award the people who are all doing it once you start awarding it automatically there is a culture that develops where each one want to perform better and once they want to perform better then the entire entire education becomes complete so we do conduct the quiz programs for these staffs and also like demo classes like how do you do the fogging how do you do the cleaning everything is being demonstrated to each of them and when you demonstrate to each of them and then do it and then overall the culture becomes like they think that it is important so they think that they no longer take it as a work it, it doesn't mean that they are working they are cleaning not like that it becomes part of their habit it becomes part of their passion to make sure that the air quality is better the theater becomes a temple for them so that it becomes like they always make sure that every part of it is being cleaned and then they never take it as a work job it is actually they take it as a part of the patient outcome so that is why none of them will complain that they have to do the work after you go away after the surgeons goes away it is the nurses who keep doing this why do why will they do it if you are away because if you educate them if you know them that it is a part of their job and then you make them inculcate inculcate a habit that it is they who are important to get this job done i think everyone in the team will do it off without any problem they will never consider it as a major hurdle and they will never think it is extra job for them and also like you will like if they have to switch it on they will definitely switch it on and every day it is also monitored whether they are switching it on or not and it is switched off one hour prior to surgery all these are important and then like see like when they are doing the hand wash or hand rub you can see that they they are all taught where exactly the problems are all there how exactly they have to scrub everything and this is a uv hand inspection inspection by the 3m company and then it will let you know where all there is some sort of dirt is collecting so it it it, is, it gives them the idea that how exactly they have to clean it so these are all part of the education so which you have to completely monitor and then if you inculcate the habits in every team member and of course that is the best way you can get everybody in the team and then that is how you are prevent your surgical site infections so of course the link nurses keep educating each one and then we we prepare them the hand hygiene champions and then once these are all given they continuously monitor the other nurses so that is how it is being done and then if you take the antibiotic policy i think professor tanna has nicely mentioned it if we always looked at the drugs used dose given and duration of antibiotics there is always a compliance on drugs used and dose given on the antibiotic policy but always there is a problem with the duration of antibiotics so but antibiotic policy in every hospital is set up to provide a safe effective and economic rational use of antibiotics 
and ultimately to improve patient care, minimize the emergence of bacterial resistance in the community for the future. As a whole, we are, we are all responsible because in future, there are not going to be many antibiotics. We have to make sure that the community for the future, we should, we should be at large, must be responsible to use our antibiotics economically. So we have an antibiotic policy where a clean surgery means it is kefuroxim 1.5 gram single dose. Suppose if it is with implants, then the kefuroxim is continuous for two to additional two doses, that is eight hourly interval. So that is it. Whereas if it is a contaminated wound, we add amikacin that goes in. Suppose if it is contaminated wounds, but come late, we have an ametronidazole, but not beyond two days. So this is the antibiotic policy we have framed. And then you see in February 2006 that we did an antibiotic policy audit in that the choice of the antibiotic means that whatever the antibiotic that we have put as an antibiotic policy, 87% were compliant. Whereas the duration of the antibiotics, only 32% were compliant. Suppose if we say only one dose to be given means they would not give one dose, they would have given additional doses. So. What we said was we followed it for years and year after and year. Complaint less were, uh, complaints was coming little higher and higher. But one fine day we decided that it is not going to reach 100%. So what we did was we made a new rule that consultant need permission to continue the antibiotics with valid reason. That means moment one dose to be a clean surgery without implant mean one dose means it will be stopped after one dose that HIC nurse will do it off in spite of our, our instructions. If we have to continue, we have to take the permission from the HIC team. So when we made this rule, now the compliance rate is nearly 100%. So we have made it that it is really good. So you can see that among the consultants also, like now we wanted to see a surgical site infections because we wanted to make it like each of the consultants also need to perform better. So we said that, okay, let us have an audit on the consultants. So when we did the consultants, it is for the trauma group. So I, I'm happy that I am performing better in this surgical site infection. So we did that. And then our benchmark was we wanted to get make sure that our infection rate must be at 1%. So we kept it at 1.5%. Then we came at less than that. So we said, no, it must be 1%. So you can see that nearly all of us are around that. There is no problem with that. So I think we are getting there. So this is what we said. Initially, we had a 1.5 as a bench benchmarking. So we are getting below that. And then you can see in 2020, there was some drop around 30% drop in the patient load. But you can see every month we were less than 1%, except that probably in September month and all other months we were less than 1%. So I think we are there, we are getting there. So it is only because of the continuous efforts and monitoring. So the surveillance is the key. So if you are continuously monitored, you are always doing better. And you can also get the outcome better. And then you can see that we can also get the root cause analysis and wherever, whatever the way, whether it could be an administration or whether it could be a consultant or whether it could be some other, other healthcare worker, we can find it out and you can get the remedial actions. So what is important is, the analysis is important. So you can get all this process, everything can be analyzed. And overall, what we need to concentrate is these five patient care practices. <clears throat> One is the urinary catheters, vascular axis lines, pulmonary functions, surgical procedures, and hand hygiene. These are the five things you need to definitely concentrate. And if you concentrate and give the bundles of care for each of them, like surgical site, ventilator assisted, catheter related or intravenous lines assisted along with pulmonary function and hand hygiene, then I think if you give all this put together, then you can definitely get it better. As far as surgical site infection is concerned, I think chlorexidine skin prep, antibiotic one hour before skin incision, preoperative use of clippers and perioperative glycemic control and then maintaining normothermia. These form the five biggest principles where you need to look at and you always get a good outcome but always remember that it is the implementation that is the key if you are strict if you if the leaders becomes good enough to make sure you need to get it right implement it you get the resources and everything given educate everybody together 
and then overcome the resistance there is always going to be somebody who is going to resist but you need to overcome that you need to you need to put them into right place and then get it sorted out and then audit always keep re auditing continuously re audit it is not just sufficient to do one audit it has to be continuous auditing and this will get you into a good improved outcome and then you can always find out the cause and then the get a action this is the raj proforma that we always do it for the surgical site infection so you we, we can just get it going and then it must be a real time check sudden check also you have to do and then improve all, always wherever the compliance is not there you have to get get them speak to them individually and then get it sorted out and always get a feedback see like you continuously ask others also what is the feedback and if it is good enough you have to continuously implement it suppose if you get a feedback and you don't implement it it may they may not give you another feedback so you have to also get that into a right direction and always compare the performance that's why we like trauma consultants we in between we also have a small competition on how to get it right and then how to get it going so we, if you have such sort of competition amongst your own colleagues then it is always easier and then get you can get your sort it out so what is important is why surgical site infection we need to monitor by all multimodal activities and the team work is purely because if you look the antibiotics there are a lot of antibiotics coming all the way up to 1970s after that you see there are no antibiotics coming up there are no new antibiotics coming up so you have to be very very careful now with the last uh, i think one year before or somewhere i think the super bugs theory came up there were a lot of super bugs they were thinking of the resistance is more high and then it is going to be a real problem so that is why all of us for the community service also we must make sure you establish a good antibiotic policy follow it so that we prevent resistance and also get your surgical site infections in better control so you can see like 1990 was a fluoroquinolone after that nothing came up so now what next so you have to really think about it if you really think about it then we can get all the systems and policies in control and of course it will only work only when you monitor when you do a surveillance and monitoring and then only it will work so in short what i would like to say is surveillance data is the basic requirement data is the basic requirement for which you can do all these root analysis and remedial actions can be taken and monitor all the process and educate everybody continuously re audit get a feedback and get the benchmark whatever the benchmark you set you must achieve it and get a lower benchmark and then try to achieve it then only you will get going thank you all for listening to this thank you mm -hmm.